Yeah. All right. All right. So here's where we left off yesterday. We talked about the most famous example of British imperialism, uh, or of imperialism, which is the British imperialism and colonization of India. We went through kind of how that worked, um, that it was a company, and basically you can know everything that you need to know about that through that reading exercise we did the other day. Uh, you have that, that is for yours to study from, and it is, uh, I've already graded it, so we're all good to go with that. Uh, so make sure you know that, you need to know the ins and outs of British imperialism in India, okay? Uh, this movie, this clip here I've shown you, and you will be watching that again on your own in order to answer some questions on a quiz later. And then also understand the partition of India, which is pretty self-explanatory, it's all right here for you. Okay. Um, one thing I do want to mention is that at first it was called East Pakistan and West Pakistan. Eventually they changed this country's name to Bangladesh, which is why it said Bangladesh up here. Okay. Now, transitioning now to a different era of imperialism or, or place of imperialism, and this is now going to be South Africa. Before we get into that, I want to discuss this question right here. In America, right, in this country, could a man be incarcerated for 27 years before being uh, president, or, and then become president shortly after getting out? Could that ever happen? No. No? What? Can you think of a situation where it may? Maybe if he was, like, falsely accused. Falsely accused? But even, let's look at, like, like Stephen Avery on the Make It a Murder documentary. Oh. Right? So he's falsely accused, got out of for 18 years, not, and he wasn't really presidential material. He was kind of a hillbilly from a junkyard, okay? Um, no, that's not a bad thing, but he was, okay? He's not necessarily presidential material, but boy, that would have to be, you'd have to be some sort of a leader to get out of prison after 27 years and then become president, right? Like pretty, like that's crazy to think that that could happen. There has to be something crazy going on. So put that in the back of your mind. We'll come back to that idea a little bit later, okay? Well, wasn't Question. that the case with Gandhi? Because, like, wasn't he in prison for... Gandhi was put in jail time in the, uh, here and there by the uh, British government, basically. But he was never the president of India. He was just kind of the leader of the independence movement. Okay. Nelson Mandela? Yes, you're ahead of the game. We'll talk about that. That's what I'm referring to here. Yeah. So Gandhi was like Martin Luther King for us. Bingo. I think that's... Ver uh, yes, except Gandhi was fighting for national independence, whereas Martin Luther King was fighting for <coughs> civil, rights. civil rights. Yes, which is a big difference. Okay. Um, this is more like Martin uh, Nelson Mandela is more like a Martin Luther King than Gandhi is. So let's talk about that. This was called apartheid. You've seen this video on it, all right? And you wrote a little blurb about what apartheid was. South Africa was imperialized by the Dutch at first, then Great Britain, right? So the Dutch were there, and then the Dutch found, I think, gold and that sort of thing. And then the British were all like, oh, let's go get that, right? Because we're more powerful than the Dutch, so let's just go take it. And that's what happened. So the Dutch were there very early on in the imperialistic era, era and then Great Britain came later. Uh, Great Britain took over. A lot of Dutch still live there, okay? When Great Britain gave up rule in the mid-1900s-ish, okay, early 1900s, the remaining Dutch took power. So the Dutch people that were there before Great Britain ever came were still hanging around. They then took power, all right? Dutch are white. They're from the Netherlands. They're Northern Europeans, okay? They were a large minority, all right? It was probably, don't quote me on this, if I had to say, it's probably 90% uh, truly native Africans, all right? Um, black people uh, and probably 10% Dutch white people, okay? But the Dutch were the ones to take control. So from 1948 to 1994, they had this concept called apartheid, which was a system of racial segregation. Think apart, right? Apartheid means separate, okay? That gave whites many rights and power. They can own business, they can do whatever they want, okay? While giving blacks very few rights, essentially no power. It was a lot like Jim Crow in the United States after slavery, all right? Uh, whites only stuff, blacks can't do this, blacks can't do that, and the whites basically had all the power. So it was a lot like segregation in America, okay? This happened, this went on for, do the math, darn near 50 years, okay? So what caused it to end? Diplomacy did, which is a method of resolving disputes and managing relations between nations without the use of war. You need to know that word diplomacy. Okay? It's a method of resolving disputes among nations without war. Right? So it's a way to establish relationships and treaties and just talk to other nations that is not war. That's what diplomacy is. And how did that work? Well, I'll skip some of the basic stuff there. But the United Kingdom and the United States imposed economic sanctions. Basically, they refused to buy anything from South Africa, and they refused to allow South Africa to buy anything from them. So South Africa's economy was going down the crapper. Okay? And then they were like, okay, we should probably get rid of apartheid. They also, I believe, were not allowing South Africa to participate in the Olympic Games. 
Uh, it doesn't say this here, but that's just something I know from other sources. Um, and then basically all the, the whole rest of the world, remember this is 1994 here, right? So like America was well beyond segregation and the civil rights movement, okay? They still had it going on in 1994 in South Africa. And the whole rest of the world was looking at them like, ew, you're gross, like, you're weird, why are you doing that? You can't hang out with us, you're no fun, right? And then um, South Africa realized like, yeah, maybe we should get rid of that, okay? And then what happened, Nelson Mandela was let out of jail after 27 years because he was protesting apartheid 27 years earlier, okay, in jail that whole time. And in the next election, they held actual public elections where black people got to vote. He was elected, I believe, again, don't quote me, but I think with 96 or 97% of the popular vote, which is crazy. 96% of people who voted voted for him, right? So he overwhelmingly won. Overwhelmingly won. He got out of prison and became president in a very short time. Uh, now, remember doing stats? Do you remember we did that stats activity about industrialization in countries? A while back where you looked at numbers and you looked at that population data sheet. Do you remember anything about South Africa that was different than the rest of Africa? Like, go ahead, Mason. Um, I don't know if I'm right on this, but like their death rate was higher. Was high, yeah, like overall. Do you remember? What did you have to say? Didn't they have like a really large percentage of whites compared to blacks for like Africa? They did, and that's because a lot of Dutch people still live there. Yeah. But do you remember any other stats? I'll just tell you, compared to the rest of Africa, they were doing a whole lot better when it comes to poverty, disease, um, infant mortality rate, stuff like that, okay? Uh, they did have a high rate of AIDS, right, um, compared to a lot of countries. So AIDS is still a problem there. But everything else, they're a heck of a lot better than the rest of Africa. They are far more advanced than the rest of Africa. Here's why, right? Because when Nelson Mandela got out, if you were put into prison for 20, by, 27, for, by these white people for 27 years simply for getting equal rights, what would you do when you got out? Run for president. Run for president. When, when you became president, what would you do then? Make it laws better. against the whites. I would pound their face. Okay? I would be like, white genocide now. Woohoo! Okay? When, I mean, imagine the bitterness. 27 years in prison just because you're black. And then you get out and have power. Right? I'd be like, revenge time. Okay? It's payback time. Nelson Mandela did not do that. He said, as I walked out of the door toward the gate that would lead to my freedom, I knew if I didn't leave my bitterness and hatred behind, I'd still be in prison, right? Or nothing would change. So he advocated for nonviolence. He said, blacks, do not, now that we have freedom, doesn't mean you should use that to go and get revenge against the whites, because then you're no better than them. He said, we need to now live in peace. And they had this thing called the Truth and Reconciliation Act, where like, if you did something bad to black people um, during the time of apartheid, if you went into a courtroom and just admitted it and said sorry, you were let off the hook then. You couldn't be charged with any crimes. Okay? And all these people came into these courtrooms and just apologized and cried, and it was like this truth, and, and then it just like allowed the nation to heal. It's like this amazing thing in history, which I don't have a lot of time to teach you about. It doesn't really have to do with our learning target of imperialism industry and that stuff, but it's cool. right? So basically, moral of the story here, think about Gandhi. Think about Nelson Mandela. Think about Martin Luther King Jr. Those are major movements in human history that were successful because they didn't involve violence. Right? So that's kind of something that you guys should know. Now, here's what you're going to do next. Do the apartheid main idea exercise, which you can find on the unit three page of IQ on the bottom of those unit docs and links. Take care of that. I want you to email me the, what you would put in that last box. You'll see what I mean. You need to, you're looking at two political cartoons. You need to turn the ideas of those cartoons into a main idea statement. And you're going to email me that main idea statement by the end of class today. And then you're also going to take the LT3 practice quiz one, which is on the bottom of the unit three page. Please do that now. Have a good weekend.